So now that we know what a Punnett square is, let's actually take a look at how we can apply the Punnett square to help us solve different types of problems in genetics. And let's begin by discussing those same two experiments that were conducted by Gregor Mendel, which allowed him to basically discover the law of dominance and the existence of dominant traits and recessive traits. So let's begin with experiment one. Now, in experiment number one, what he did was he took a true breeding tall plant and he mixed it, he crossed it with a true breeding short plant. And what that basically means is he took a homozygous dominant plant and he mixed it with a homozygous recessive plant. So the phenotype for this plant is tall and the genotype is uppercase T, uppercase T, where uppercase T represents that gene that codes for proteins that expresses the tall height. Now, in the case of the homozygous recessive plan, we have a short phenotype and we have a genotype equaling to lowercase t, lowercase t, where lowercase t is the gene that codes for proteins that expresses the short trait and not the tall trait. Now, every time he conducted this same experiment, he always found that the F1 generation offspring was always tall, it was never short. The question, is, <clears throat> the question is, what exactly is the genotype of this F1 generation? Well, to determine what the genotype is, we have to determine what all the possibilities of that genotypes are. And to do that, we have to apply the Punnett square. Remember, the Punnett square is the tool that we use in genetics that allows us to determine all the different potential possibilities for the genotype of that particular offspring. So we begin with the parent that has uppercase T, uppercase T, and the other parent has lowercase, lowercase T, and they mix, they mate, they, they are crossed, and they produce a, a certain offspring. So let's begin with the homozygous dominant, which means we have uppercase, uppercase T, and when we produce the gametes, the two T's separate into individual cells. So let's suppose we have uppercase T and we have uppercase T. Now the other pan has lowercase t, lowercase t, so these two individual genes separate during the process of meiosis to basically form the gametes, and so we have gamete one and we have gamete number two. So what happens when this mixes with this? Well, we basically form an uppercase T, lowercase t. And so this type of offspring is known as a heterozygous individual. It has one dominant and one recessive. Now, what will be the phenotype of such an individ uh, individual? Well, basically, as a result of the law of dominance, because uppercase T will mask, it will inhibit the expression of lowercase T, in this case, we're going to get a tall and not a short <clears throat> phenotype. Now, what will happen when this mixes with this? Well, we basically produce, once again, this same type of heterozygous individual. In fact, if we examine every single one of these, if this mixes with this, we produce uppercase T, lowercase t, and here, we produce uppercase T, lowercase t. Remember, because the uppercase T is dominant, it always comes before the lowest, lowercase t. So we never actually write our genotype in the following way. This is an incorrect way to write it because the dominant trait is always placed in front of that recessive trait. So what we basically see is 100% of the time, the offspring will have a genotype that is equal to uppercase T, lowercase t. And that's precisely why 100% of the time, that offspring will be tall, it will never be short. And that's exactly why every time Gregor Mendel actually carried out this experiment, he saw that the offspring always resembled the homozygous dominant parent, the tall parent, and never the homozygous recessive parent, the short parent. So 100% of the time, we're essentially going to have a heterozygous 
uh, offspring. And that's because <clears throat> this is 25% of the time, this is 25% of the time, this is 25% of the time, 25% and we add these up and we get 100%. Now let's move on to experiment number two. So what he did in experiment number two was he took the F1 generation that was produced and he basically crossed it with itself. So let's suppose we carry out this experiment twice and so we produce two of these plants. And so what he did next was he took the F1 plant and he crossed it with itself. And what that basically means is he crossed two heterozygous offsprings. So we have uppercase T uppercase T for one of the genes and we have a lowercase t and a lowercase t for the other genes. And so what this cross is, it's a cross between a heterozygous individual and a heterozygous individual for the same exact trait. The trait in this case is height. And this specific type of test cross is known as a monohybrid test cross because we're basically crossing two heterozygous individuals for a given trait for the high trait. Now, what he found out was that 75% of the time, or about 75% of the time, the individuals were tall, but 25% of the time, the individuals were short. So let's actually confirm this by using the Punnett square. So once again, one of the parents is uppercase T, lowercase T, and we know when we form the gametes, the law of segregation tells us that uh, these two genes basically separate into individual cells, into individual gametes. So let's suppose this is parent number one, and so we have uppercase T here, we have lowercase t here, and then here we have parent number two, so we have lowercase t here, and uppercase T here. So let's follow the same exact procedure. So first step is this crosses with this and if that actually takes place we produce uppercase T uppercase T. Now if this crosses with this we produce uppercase T lowercase T. How about if this crosses with this? Well in that case we produce uppercase T lowercase T and finally, if the final case takes place, T, T, we have lowercase t, lowercase t. And so what we actually see is 25%, so this is 25% of the individuals will be homozygous dominant. So we have 25% of the, these individuals, in this case the plants, will be homozygous dominant for that trait. Now we have 50% because this is 25% and 25%. So 50% of the individuals will actually be heterozygous, just like these plants were, the F1 generation. And by the way, this is the F2 generation that is formed. So this is the F1 generation pun and square, and that is the F2 generation Punnett square. So we essentially have 50, uh, 25 and 25, that produces 50 heterozygous um, F2 generation. And then we have the remaining 25% are actually short, and that's because they're homozygous recessive. So we have 25% are homozygous recessive. And so if we tally up these percentages, we see that because of the law of dominance, not only will this have a phenotype of tall, this will also have a tall phenotype because the uppercase T is dominant over the lowercase T. So 25% plus 50% gives us the 75% that was observed by Gregor Mendel when he carried out these experiments. And the remaining 25% will be, will have a phenotype that is short, 
because this is lowercase t, lowercase t. And so this is how we can use the Punnett square to basically help us solve different types of problems in genetics. And we'll look at many more examples in the lectures to come.